everybody, welcome to the channel for new battle report. So this is the second game that I played during the Team ETC Switzerland bootcamp. Uh, I played against our KOE player. KOE is often a complicated matchup for Ogre Khan, I feel, because of the, um, I think, the gap in charge range. Uh, that's often one of the strengths of Ogre Khan is the fact that they have good advance and march rate and charge range and in this case the the gap with koe is not in the favor of ogre khan and also the fact that they have very solid uh yeah opening pieces like penitent that we see a lot at the moment and are kind of complicated to deal with especially from range because they are very resilient so let's see this is my list you know it already this is my opponent's list he plays a Fighty Lord on a Fasted, then he has a Master Druidism, he has the BSB with I think like 1-up and 2-spell, that's mainly the purpose of this BSB for a cheap price, he's BSB and has 2-spell of Divination. Then he has 12 Feudal, 6 Feudal with Discipline Banner, he has Hereditary Spell here, 8 Ordo Sergeant, 9 Quest. Uh, he has 27 Men at Arms that are Ordo Warden, which is the great weapon, guys, with a Relentless Banner. 4 Penitent, 5 Yeoman and the Fey Knight. So two, three kind of chaff pieces or opening pieces. Uh, two of them are stubborn which is uh, kind of complicated. And then he has also the Mana Tarms that he can easily use to, to march forward and block something. And as you can see he has high number of scoring units, 2, 4, 6. So that's, that's really a lot. A spell selection. So we play, first of all we play King of the Hill on Dawn Assault which is one of the ETC setup. And spell selection decided to go with a mix of uh, four buffs and four spells that I can use from distance, which is Savage Fury, Double Fireball, and 2d6 Strength 4. I felt the pyro damage are kind of interesting this matchup because they can reduce the numbers of the of the knight on foot, the order warden, because they only have a four up, six up. So if I can reduce them a bit, it could be interesting for the rest of the battle, especially if I can reduce them a bit before combat. And my opponent picked uh, 1, 4, 5, 6 of Druidism. I think that's the correct numbers. What I remember, he had Stone Skin and Double Eel. Then he had Hereditary and 1 and 3 from Druidism. What, what can I say about the matchup? It's always tricky to find KOE for Gokan because of the super charge range of KOE. I need to avoid a frontal fight where he can push me easily. So I need to cause him problem and uh, make him take decision and make choice because that's the way he might do mistakes and I could take advantage of that. Starting could be a nice way to limit his aggression potential. Obviously the stubborn pieces are key to open the game. I think between the Penitent and the Fey Knight they could push me, block me and then he can counter charge with something that causes a lot of damage on the charge and that could be, uh, the, it's, it's, I think, the key threat for me in this matchup. Estimation of the matchup, I felt that it's a negative matchup for me. Deployment wise, I won the roll for side. Uh, I picked this part of the map and I gave him this part of the map. I picked the ruin as my train to defend. I felt with the impossible it's really hard for him to, to reach this part uh, of, the, of the train and since he's going to attack me he's likely to have to charge and take DTs which is also something interesting and on his side he had the choice between the lake, the wall, the hill, maybe the field decided to go for the lake which I think is the most sensitive choice but that's also interesting for me because he has one train of defend on the far left and my train is on the far right which forces him to make choices he's going to drop the first turn and drop the following uh, the Ordo Warden here the quest, the small feudal bus Ordo Sergeant with BSB and Mage General is right here uh, Human Outrider, the big bus of feudal and then on the left of the forest he put for Penitent and the Great Knight. So basically the two stubborn pieces are guarding the left while the rest of his army is looking to push me. So how did I counter deploy? Basically I put two big blocks on the right with three potential pieces of chaff to protect my, uh, my uh, piece of train and be prepared for his aggression. I put two flexible monsters with high lateral movement in the middle that can either support the right or support the left. And on the far left, I decided to go with the Merc Vets Discipline Banner alone, thinking these two threats, I mean, even two against one, I'm not sure to win against strength six Merc Vets. 
So I felt I have decent chance and if I support them with the Frosty, I could easily cause him trouble. And also what I liked a lot is the fact that if I go with a strong scoring unit for his piece of train to defend, he might have to move the field out towards the left. And then that's something you hate when you need to attack is having to push on the left, push a bit on the right and split your forces, which makes hard to have BSB range, to have the spell range and so on. So I felt uh, this is creating a nice problem for, for for him. And basically by deploying everything in the corner here would make his life easier by just pushing me here and not having to worry about the left flank. So I felt this is a, this is the, the good choice for me. So we'll see how that goes. He's turn one, he pushes me. So he went uh, sideways with the green knight, the penitent behind the hill. I cannot see them. Uh, Fudal move a bit forward, but still respect the charge range. Uh, I wanted to put those two guys together just to tell him if you push too much, I can charge double monsters and that could be too much for you. Uh, he move a bit those guys, but without using relentless and he start moving to the flank by marching Fudal and the quest. In magic phase, he get hard target on the quest. And that's it for his turn one because yeah so my turn one first of all i turn around the mergrets to just avoid him to go out of arc or if he wants i want him to move back and stay a bit out of the battle i want him to continue to to push to the left uh, and since we are quite close to the board edge if he wants to keep a reasonable charge range he cannot really move much to the side so i want to stop that um the penitent don't see my don't see my mergrets and I'm covering the flank with the Frost Mammoth. So if you want to push here, I'm going to see with the Frosty, keeping the two monsters to in the center to make sure that the Feudal cannot push too much. And then right flank didn't move much actually. So I have the, the Great Can and BSB as a reminder in this unit. And here I have the two mages in the Bruiser block. I just move a bit forward with the dogs, as you can see, basically tempting him to charge. Even I could cast a Frenzy Bait spell on this unit. Um, I would be in range and if he charge he has no overrun so basically he could overrun out of the table or get charged which um, could be quite interesting for me so I felt this is a, a move where I risk nothing but I'm in better position to chaff maybe later in magic phase he dispel a first fireball on the chaff then I cast the second one I do nothing with with the damage and I managed to do one wound to the general with the blaze and with shooting against the hard target quest, I managed to kill two of them, which is not bad for, for a start. His turn two, he moves his general a bit more forward to try to get into charging position, move a bit forward with the quest. Didn't move much here. I continue to move forward with his infantry block. Um, other than that, on the left, he moves out of arc of my Murgrets with his penitent to, to push me, but moves in front of my Frosty. And then the third I'll get into position to threaten the flank of those guys. Here, like I said, he couldn't move much to the side, so he just move a bit to the side, but not much. Uh, keeps really far away from my Murgrets. And uh, that's it. Yeah, he keeps his chaff in the back for the moment. In the magic phase, he healed the wound on his general and got stone skin because I had the 9 swift stride here, which could be dangerous for him. Um, obviously, he could force me in a challenge, but I would have a charge a rank and a banner so start at plus three and i could easily chaff his counter charge this one and this one so that could be dangerous for him that's why also he got uh, i think stone skin and obviously if i fail the charge it's not so good for me and sacrificing so early to piece of chaff is not the best case but i think he wanted to get better assurance here that his lord is not too much in trouble in case i attempt this kind of uh, middle long charge a my turn two i charge the penitent with the frosty and i found a good solution here so i got close to the penitent with my merc vets basically to stop him any reform meaning the feudal in this situation cannot charge into the frosty because of the pe the penitent and either if the penitent passed stubborn nine or if they flee but not too far away because i make them uh, minimize because of the frosty he could be chaffed and I'm in a perfect situation. And if we stay like that on Stubborn, basically the Feudal charging me would mean I strike before because of the aura of the Frost and he has no chance in this combat. And here basically I leave him, I think, with a charge on 11 or 12. So that's perfect for me. Uh, the Giant was free to push in the middle of his line. Nobody can charge me, basically, uh, because those guys can charge nothing. So he's blocked from charging the Giant. And I'm threatening his flying. Even if he moves back or do anything, I would be able to see him. So I felt this is quite an interesting position for, for me. On the right, I activate them as Chaff. 
which allows me to move forward with the Mergrets and cover the flank. Those guys reform three wide to get two ranks and a standard in case the general wants to charge feel free and then I would have counter charge of the Mergret in case he wants to charge directly in the Mergrets. Uh, I feel totally fine with that to be honest. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, that's it for my movement basically. In the magic phase, uh, I got plus one resilience on the frosty uh, for this combat and the potential upcoming other fights. Uh, with shooting, I kill another two quests, so it's continuing to be to be effective. And close combat, I'm going to kill four wounds of him between impact and my attacks, which is nice. Uh, he did one wound to me. He failed his stubborn check. Uh, then I fail my restraint check on eight. And then he flees 11, so pff, that's exactly what I didn't need to happen. Um, like I said, I had three solutions, either he passes the stubborn, that's perfect for me. Uh, if I pass my restraint, that's not the best situation, but at least I can minimize the frontage for the upcoming charge of his feudal. And then if he flees, at least if he flees up to 9, he would be chaffing himself. And then last case, if he flees, I cannot restrain, at least catching him, which I didn't manage to. So I really, that's the worst possible outcome for me. Uh, not so likely to happen, but it did. He's turn 3, in this case he could easily charge with the Feudal into the Frosty. Uh, push me to the flank with the Green Knight. Um, here we see it's still, I mean he need to get through, I have Resilience 7. If he doesn't, I would get charge. Uh, I could have double flank, so that's that's a key combat for him. Those guys didn't rally, continue to flee. Uh, here he uses the relentless push towards my Death Star, and he charges to the chaff with an overrun into the front of those Murgrats, and here he charge my chaff. In magic phase, he got plus one to hit into this close combat. Uh, he got stone skin on his general, which I let go. I dispel the heal on the quest. And he got our target distracting on the feudal knight. Uh, just in case, in close combat, he did one wound to my frost only. He fluffed a bit. I did one wound to him. Um, but he still had um, solid combat rest. And I lost, I think, by four. And um, yeah, I lost by, by four. And therefore, I, I didn't pass my, my break check. So I break. I flee. And he makes a long pursue, which is out of my arcs here, and he gets the frosty. So again, uh, here could have have a different outcome. We'll see how I react to that. Here he makes those guys flee, overrun, but catch them, I guess. Yeah. Um, my turn three, I charge into his uh, guy on foot because he didn't buff them. So we'll see how that goes. Here I pass the march check and march towards. Uh, those guys to basically, if they rally, I can get them, and I want to get this secondary for sure. Turn around the giant to to punish them, so I find a way to, to chaff them, basically. Uh, they would be in my front, they have no overrun, and so on. And here I could easily reform, so we'll see how that goes. Here I rallied the, the dogs in 9 rollable, I only lost one of them last round, and I killed two knights. It was quite kind of funny. And I find a reform which doesn't allow both to get into my flank. Uh, which I felt is, is interesting for me, so we'll see also how that goes. In depends also on the, the way I do the reform, so I need to be smart here. In the magic phase, I got plus one resilience onto the boss here, I rolled triple five and did like a wound or two on my mage. Uh, and that's it for my magic, basically the rest he was able to dispel close combat. This one, um, yeah, Hitting on fours, wounding on... I have a lot of automatic hits before him, between the breast weapon, uh, the automatic hit. He forgot a bit about the league as well. And basically I win by a lot his auto break. I pursue and catch him. I ended up here in front of his order warden, out of line of sight of the feudal. So really nice, uh, got rid of this unit. And here basically I forgot about stone skin in this stat, so it's definitely not 38%, it should be around the 10-15% I guess, to do a wound, but I managed to do a wound on this general, he did nothing to me, um, and therefore he's losing by 2, it's the check on the 7, which he did pass, so um, he passed the check on the 7, no reroll, uh, he's turn 4, he charged onto my chaff piece here, he double charged with the knights onto the flank of the bruisers, that did suffer some wounds, he rallied the penitent, pushes with the green knight to the flank and here we are that way and yeah that's it more or less 
and magic phase he get hard target distracting on his lord i guess and plus two plus two weapon skill on some combat i use the binding scroll on the big hill i wanted to avoid more knight and i dispel the second hill here i think he could have put more dice maybe to to heal the quest i think this is key because he needs to break my steadfast and for that he need to do 10 wounds uh, which is still quite a lot close combat what did happen got rid of those guys except one guy that fled passes a restraint check uh, here like you see he had a difficult march check on I think they have leadership seven or six minus one so like uh, five or six rollable to go in front of the giant which they did and next round they need to pass the same check for the terror uh, or yeah without the minus one but for the terror to avoid me charging so we'll see how that goes and what happened in close combat basically here he fluffs again uh, did nothing to my lord you saw the stat before so he did zero i did zero to him he lose by two steadfast uh, of a check on a seven with no reroll he failed that one and here it didn't manage to break my steadfast and that's already the end because you see the situation uh, that's before i strike but i kill some knights and reform to the front but you can see the situation here on bottom uh, start of my turn four um, i can either go for that charge or go here for the flank depending what happened with the giant here if the giant managed to make them flee and reform i could charge here to block that and get rid of that in the middle uh, in the meantime so i have plenty of options here and since the game was taking a very long time until now we decided to, to stop here we saw what we wanted to see uh, this is surely a, a win for the ogre can it's just more about how do i manage that but i have secondary in hand i have one unity on the top left eating the penitent here there is no way it's going to get that and it's just about uh, what what happened with the terror and so on what's what decision do i make but it's basically um, it's basically over for for the battle. I think the most sensitive choice in case he passes the terror check here would be to charge the merc vets into here because here I'm pretty safe if I buff the combat. I'm pretty safe against the remaining knight. I think I kill like two or three against the remaining knight. I'm pretty safe to hold. And then once I got rid of the feudal, I can go and support after that. Then that's that's pretty much over. So yeah, that's it for for this battle. Uh, basically what can i say about the battle deployment was i think a good idea to put the albard to the left worked really well uh, make hard decision for him during, during the aggression the aggression it's also one of the reasons it took so so much time i think multiple times he asked himself what should i do had so many options so many possibilities uh turn to ogre i think my the trap that i organized against the feudal and the penitent was nice i thought about all the scenario i felt it's kind of unlikely that it happened the way it happened but that's how it did so didn't work out as planned but i think i had a lot of other scenario where i would have come up on top even sometimes with getting rid of the feudal in the process so i think it's um, yeah could have turned out totally differently i'm still quite happy about the the solution i found turn three koe i think going into the merc was probably a mistake with the lord i think what you want with this list is to stick the unit first with a stubborn unit and then go with the lord and not something different like he did here uh, taking s obviously he fluff in combat so he could have also make a couple of wounds and not uh, not have to take a break check but still it was it was risky and he paid a heavy price for that i think he underestimated the infantry versus bruiser combat i easily uh, broke him down so I think he could have buffed that a bit. If he would have, I think I wouldn't have charged. I would have just minimized the contact and make his charge more complicated. Turn for KOE. Uh, I remember he had other spell casting option. I think he did three dice heal and three dice plus two weapon skill. I think should have done four dice heal and two dice on reason, which is pretty much the same as the plus two weapon skill because he can get plus one to hit. But he has also a second or reason to make like a ward save somewhere. So I think he had some better casting option here. And yeah, like I said, the Lord breaking meant the game was over. Stubborn pieces being occupied was on the left was, was huge, definitely. Um, that's something that could have allowed him to push more or, easy, or easily. And creating another fighting zone on the left was key in my ability to hold. I think that's what's to remember from, from this battle. Guys, that's it for this battle report. I hope you liked it. It was a very interesting battle, very intense, uh, a lot of action. So I hope you liked it. And uh, talk to you soon on the channel for the third game. Bye.